What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Last Principles. I'm your host, M.A., bringing y'all another episode of Cult Conversations. I got a, a special treat for y'all. Tonight is my first time interviewing a married couple who is a former who are former ICOC members. I got some um, some OGs with me, uh, <laughs> Adam and Chiggy Artists. How y'all doing tonight? We're good, good man. <laughs> good, good. Glad y'all are glad y'all are here. I say OGs. Oh, I, for, I forgot. Um, Chiggy, I know you. You probably been around longer than than I had. You we you go way 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 back. Right? Way way way. <laughs> so let, let's let's go in chronological order here. In, in that case, Chiggy, what okay. was what was going on in life for you right before you you joined the ICOC? Well, I technically joined when I was a teenager. Mm. I was sixteen, and I mean life wasn't bad. I think the reason I, the reason I personally joined is because. My sister was a part and i feel like in our situation mm -hmm. i really did feel, feel like i saw her change and mm. she was righteous i don't feel like it was artificial i didn't feel like it was weird or anything i just felt like i saw her change and i saw how positive the changes were and <clears throat> i saw the relationship she had with her friends in campus and i mean of course everywhere you go they're going to be shady people there were some shady ones <laughs> undercover shady all came out on the end but i feel like mm. it's funny i feel like her core friends i do feel like they were just generally good people and wanted to, to, to live right yeah and um, that kind of attracted me to want to become a disciple and i say disciple i mean to really be a follower of god of yeah. jesus not the weirdness that some people were doing when mm. i started coming out of church which honestly i felt like i saw pretty soon on but you know me, I'm, I've been the same. I'm always going to say what I feel. So I never had, yeah, I guess yeah. I never really had that big a problem because I don't play games with people. <laughs> <laughs> if something's weird or offbeat or I feel like, not even offbeat, if I'm not, if I don't feel like something's right, I'm going to say something. So, but anyway, I guess I'm saying all that to say <laughs> that that's the reason I started coming is because I saw her changing and, and then my brother, I saw him change. And then I saw my other sister. So we literally all were going to church and ICOC church but in different states or places and I do feel like for me it was the relationship my relationship with them seeing them really repent and grow and be different um it wasn't all I mean in relation to them it was great it wasn't bad you know what I mean I think that yeah all of us had challenging things or people kind of do us wrong at different points which we dealt with but as best as we could but I feel like that's what drew me to church it wasn't I don't feel like anything was especially horrible in life, you know? Yeah. Um, I think it was just the average stuff a teenager will go through. A black female teenager will go through. That's a whole nother discussion. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that's that's what drew me. And then I guess from there, I just stayed until I just felt like. I don't know. I wasn't. I don't know. I just. I don't know how to explain it. I felt like things were just I, I, I was starting to do things just because that's what I was acclimated with and really need yeah, to kind yeah. of figure myself out if that makes sense and even with church figuring out what church or where I wanted to go or what I felt like I needed to be doing like I felt like I kind of just took a pause um and then too I mean I considered going back to some form of church but then we had our son and he's on the spectrum so that added a mm. whole nother layer of what I felt like church would need to be or look like for me and now my family. So that was kind of tangible, but you know what I mean? <laughs> like it just, gotcha. things just no, kind of happen. Yeah, you're way. good. We, we going to do a whole lot of tangenting throughout okay. this whole thing. <laughs> That's, that, I, I, I welcome it. You know what I mean? Like it's none, this whole experience, none of it is linear. None of it is just, yeah, we, we going to go all over the place. It's, this is how it is. So yeah. You know, it, it's funny. As, right as you started to mention your your other siblings, I started to remember. Wait, she does have a crap ton of family in the, in the church. Yeah, y'all, <laughs> y'all deep, y'all deep in this thing. Yeah. We too deep. I don't know what what song that came from. <laughs> it just popped in my head. I don't, I don't. I know it's a song. I don't remember who sang who sang it, but yeah. Um, but yeah. So it, it so it basically was you seeing a positive change in your in your older sister, right? Yeah, my older sister, but then my brother too. Well, mm -hmm. okay, so I have two older sisters. I have one who's 11 months older than me. Mm -hmm. And then I have one who's 10 years older than me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I have a brother who's five years older than me. So, and all of them, I saw good positive changes now. Yeah. Um, initially, and then, you know, some of them stayed, some of them left. But those changes, 
I feel like they're still who they still have that the good stuff, whether they go to church or not. Like that's like they're still good. The changes they made are, were for the better. It bettered them and they took that away with them. You know, because uh, all of them don't still go technically go to ICOC right. or they're trying to figure out where they want to go. So, but yeah, so I just saw them change. And I think the main thing for me was seeing them be honest about their life and who they are. Mm. You know, it wasn't um, how many times they go to church or who they're reaching out to or the weird stuff that we made yeah, church focused on. Yeah. It was about them being different, them being honest with themselves and us being honest with each other about where we're at and, you know, just being truthful and then trying to live the best life we could. It wasn't about, I don't feel like it was about any of the other stuff that people yeah, were making, it, which I think is why some of us kind of, stuff. yeah, which is why I think the majority of us kind of got away from it because we didn't feel like, I felt like the, um, in addition to some of the, <laughs> The racial challenges <laughs> that's a whole nother issue from you know i know for me for my team in the campus early campus days that i start, that i dealt with outside of that i felt like it just everybody kind of navigated away because we just i think just really struggled and wanted to feel like we're somewhere that's genuine yeah not that people didn't care but i think that it's easy to get caught up in um a system and kind yes. of lose focus on the vulnerability and the humility that we all regardless of level level need to reciprocate to each other and i don't know that's just kind of yeah i feel you <laughs> well, so feel we like i've said a lot it's <laughs> all so good it's so all good so let's uh do a little time skip um top of the time machine adam uh so i know it was a long time between uh chicky when you got in and adam when you came in mm -hmm. what um what what was going on for you right before you hopped in? Because I know that what was mid two thousand something twenty uh, late late two thousands. Okay. So, um, yeah. So I I came in. So let me see. Cheeky came in as a teen. So I had just graduated college mm -hmm. when I came in. Um, and you know it was just at a kind of like a not a weird time in life, but just like at a like a pivot point. Um, because I you know just like so many things were just transitioning you know i was i was done with college <clears throat> um but on top of that um i was in a relationship um i was engaged but it didn't work out mm -hmm. but i had a dart on the way so mm -hmm. um you know life where i thought it was going into one direction went into you know started going into a different one and you know i you know just prior to you know understanding what the icoc was you know I, I did grow up in church so you know I, I knew i knew what um you know being a part of church was about so a, f a friend of mine invited me out and i think it was to a sunday a sunday church um a sunday service and you know i'm i'm you know baptist background so i'm thinking yeah. okay i'm gonna go hear some singing hear some preaching get something to eat and that's it right um right. but you know it turns out you know when and i think i was i was looking for god but at the same time i was just very um i guess kind of like vulnerable at the moment so like i was kind of clinging to anything that was positive and mm -hmm. in the beginning you know it 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 definitely seemed you know very very you know genuine and um you know within i think like once like within the first sunday you know started studying and i i think i i, I probably studied for about maybe like a solid month mm. and um you know that's when i got baptized but i you know just kind of like looking back on it um i don't want to say that i rushed the the whole baptism um process because you know like, i was baptized before like i was baptized right. back in high school but it was a baptism, but I, you know, I was just kind of doing it because not like not much behind it, just kind of doing it because, uh, you know, that's what I thought was was right. But even, you know, when I was baptized in ICOC, um, you know, just going through all this, all um, all of the scriptures, all of the, you know, studies, as we call them, um, I didn't question a lot of stuff. And I think like I was so young because I think at the time I, I was like 23. Mm hmm. 
Um, so I, I didn't really question a lot. And it was like kind of like later, you know, like months or like a few years after that, when I started to like notice things. Mm. Um, and, you know, I, I'll explain what those things are. And that's and, you know, as I'm, you know, like you know, 10, almost 15 years later, I'm like, hmm, you know, like maybe I should have questioned that. Like maybe I should have. Yeah. Maybe we should have spent more time on that because who knows, like maybe I wouldn't have got baptized or maybe the process would have not been as quick um, because I, I think I, I, I don't think I really knew fully what I was getting myself into, but not saying that my experience um, was, you know, terrible. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it was an experience, you know, that's what yeah. it was. Um but I think the main, the clear vision that I can have now, you know, as a, as, as an adult is, um, I'm, I'm able to, um, there's, there's more than one way to seek God <clears throat> outside of that structure, you know? Yeah. But I didn't really see that then. Um, but you know, I can kind of see that now. If that makes sense definitely definitely so i know you guys mentioned you know we all got in and we saw whether we reacted to them or not some red flags and things that just didn't quite seem right so i guess let's meet in the middle i know again i know there's a big gap between when both of y'all joined what would y'all say were were some things that you saw and was like the heck is this Mm -hmm. um i can go so just because you know from from me talking you know like it, it just kind of came up um so you know early on um i'll say like within like my first year so okay when i was baptized <clears throat> i was baptized uh like i just graduated uh college so right um i was baptized into the uh, singles ministry so you know there's campus um, campus singles marrieds so on so i was baptized in in the uh, singles and during that time you know singles were were kind of not small but just wasn't as big as campus was right um but you know i mean i you know it it didn't bother me because you know when i came in like a lot of the singles were um older than me um at least by like five years mm -hmm. but um i was cool with it so you know then probably within like three or four months of me getting baptized there was like a migration where a bunch of campus like they had graduated too so they right. migrated over to singles um and you know mo you know most of them were like my peers you know you know, like we were we were like around the same age yeah um but i think the the difference was, although we were the same age, I think like I was just at a different place mentally, um, you know, being that I had a daughter, you know, on the way and I'm just kind of dealing with life. Whereas a lot of people that were my age, like they were coming in and they were still like in that campus vibe, you know, which yeah, is cool because, yeah. hey, you know, you just graduated, um, you know, figure out life, you know, that's fine. Um, so, you know, kind of fast forward a little bit. Um, you know, like once, you know, people from campus came in, we all kind of got everything orchestrated and we, you know, all kind of got into, you know, like uh, D groups. Mm -hmm. um, and the issues that I kind of started having is like the leadership with with the D groups. It's like, you know, you know, let, you know, great people. But, um, you know, like they were very strong on the scripture side. Mm hmm. But kind of like weak on the life side. Like there were some things from life mm. I just, mm. you know, I, I just wasn't like really parallel with. And I didn't, you know, like I, I, I it was just kind of hard to follow because, yeah, you know, we're reaching out to people, getting into the scriptures. And that's cool. But like, where's your life going? Because, yeah, you know. You know, like you ain't trying to get a car, you know, you live with like 10 people and and that's fine. Mm -hmm. But like, what's the like, what's the plan? 
and um oh like, you know like, what's your plan because you know we're we're like we're you know supposed to be following you and even with that i still was able to deal with that because you know i don't feel that i was better than anybody else mm-hmm. but it started to become an issue when like the it's like the control factor started coming in it's like you know yeah. um yeah uh you know just like like what am i doing like why am i doing this and then i'm like okay bro you know we like we gotta kind of like you know have some guidelines here you know like i'm <laughs> trying to follow you like i'm trying to be like the humble humble follower here but it's just not meshing up and it's 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 too you know like when i tell a story like there's two terms that um kind of come to mind like one is relationships right um and the other one is uh falling away mm-hmm. and like these were two terms that you know i you know we all kind of heard a lot back then so with relationships so what i mean by that is you know like when i first came in it was you know always preached to you know like like go after relationships you know like really strive to you know like build them up with people and I get that, you know, that's that's very understandable. But <clears throat> what, you know, I guess what the church didn't tell well me anyway was those relationships were only valid with within the walls of the church. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Um, and the way that I found that out was um, you know, like there was a brother who um he was at the church and um, what's it called? You know, like when um, someone is um, like uh, kicked out of the church. Uh, uh, this, yes. this fellowship, yeah. yeah. This fellowship, yeah. So someone was 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 this fellowship for one reason or another, um, and you know this this you know this 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 person you know we were you know cool like we had a real um, friendship, right? So you know they were put out of the church, um, and I, I think they ended up like leaving the state or something so probably like a month or two after them leaving they had, they had called me up like hey you know I, i'm in town blah 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 let's link up for like you know lunch or something so i'm like cool you know let's let's uh make it happen so you know we um uh, got up with each other you know caught up on life um and that was that so you know like about a week later um we're in you know d group doing the um uh, ritual you know we all going around just, you know <laughs> talking about stuff and you know I, I was like you know hey you know i i got up with um so-and-so you know i'm uh, so-and-so being the brother that was this fellowship and it was like this huge thing you know about like how you know i'm socializing with people that are no longer part of the church and this this and that and you know i like, show me scripture and stuff and you know at this point i'm like okay you know i, I can see like if i was a kid you know um and wasn't able to uh, understand like the people that i'm supposed to hang out with and you know not but you know like we're all you know grown grown men here um and you know the term you know friendship you know it 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 goes beyond church you know because you can be friends with someone that you haven't seen in you know 20 years or you can be friends with someone who's you know never you know even came out of the church you know like who you bond with is just who you bond with so that yeah. that was something that you know really stuck out as a um as a red flag and um and you know the the term um falling away you know you know that's something that i never used even back then because right. you know once because the way that it was uh, I guess you say defined to me is you know like is someone is has fallen away once they stop coming to the icoc mm-hmm. and i never felt that i had that right to you know judge someone you know like that's like saying that's like saying like you know like if i'm at a job and you know i quit this job you know i'm bankrupt because i'm no longer at this job you know like i can right. be at this job or yeah. i can be at that job so you know, small things like that were, yeah. you know, kind of, you know, s- some things that I saw early on, um, so to speak. Gotcha. 
you, you you touched on something really that, that stuck out to me when you said uh the lack of you know being strong on the scriptures but being weak on the life part uh -huh. and i immediately thought of how you know with with us as as men it was beaten over our heads the whole men gotta lead men gotta lead 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 uh -huh. lead, lead, lead lead and tell me this were you ever shown how to lead like especially when it came to like relationships, you, you know, we, we got to lead the sisters, got to lead the sisters. Like, were you ever practically shown how to lead in general? Were you ever practically shown how to lead in a relationship? I mean, the only thing that, the only thing that I can think of, and I, I don't know if this would <laughs> equate to that or not, but there was this Devo once um, uh -huh. <laughs> and, you know, like it was like a video Video. Yeah, it, yeah. It, 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 it was a video <laughs> just, you know, showing like how um, like how a date is supposed to go. Uh, I mean, I don't know, like if that, you know, like, like, you know, basically saying, OK, like this is how this is, you know, uh, like a house date or this is, a, you know, a date should always have a double. But I mean, outside of like mm -hmm. really knowing how to lead. I mean, I, <laughs> I think you know for the men that was there if they had that foundation already then maybe but i really don't remember it being you know something really taught on how to lead like especially especially like you know leading you know um like a wife or yeah yeah even a girlfriend you know? mm -hmm. i don't think yeah i don't think so pretty okay. sure not <laughs> yeah because i'm I'm sitting here like in my trip and my because that that was my thought like I don't ever remember all I can remember was it was preached that we need to lead it was preached that mm -hmm. brothers got to got to lead sisters got to submit mm -hmm. but that's it we weren't shown how to like a lot of us knew I I don't I hope to God I never actually did this I don't remember doing it but I know some brothers was good at being able to tell the sisters that they need to submit. <laughs> uh, but, right. which don't right. work <laughs> submit to what submit to right. what they submit to what which which leads to my next point Oof. like we again scripture which is good we need that mm -hmm. but life like right who, who are we being taught you know how to be professional are we being taught how to get good jobs yep. are we being taught mm -hmm. how to you know handle our finances are we being right. taught how how to excel at life mm -hmm. you know right. and and i know that was a big gripe with some of the, a lot of the sisters is like not not i know i know for i know their hearts were not to uh bash the brothers i don't believe that was the heart behind mm -hmm. it that said it's like dang we we these you know we're these professional women we you know we got these you know these decent paying jobs blah 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 we got cars we got apartments and these are the brothers we got to pick from <laughs> <laughs> and it's like and those, those weren't those weren't the words said but I'm yeah, like, yeah, I'm, yeah. i figured that's probably how they felt and it's like do i need to go do i need to go to a neighboring state you know right. to go get you know find a brother mm -hmm. or or go to that state and hope one of them because you know we got to lead so they can't go go get the right brother. can't they go gotta, nowhere can't talk nobody can't do nothing <laughs> right so it's just like we weren't really set up to win Mm -hmm. all of us yeah. you know in general but specifically right. with the brothers we weren't set up to win we were told we needed to leave but weren't shown how to right and right we weren't right. shown how to be worthy of submission and even right. that I, I don't even know how how i'm still i'm re-examining a lot of stuff now as far as like what the bible does it doesn't say all that stuff but we'll, we'll mm -hmm. that's that's another time but yeah we weren't set up to win with that and we, we weren't set up to be worthy of said submission Mm -hmm. right so yeah that that as soon as you said a bunch of scripture and lack of life i was like <laughs> yeah yeah and then who was it the whole um the control i mean that's why i struggled with wanting to use the c-word cult for so long mm -hmm. and i finally just gave in because i was just like a whole bunch of different things but enough among those things was the control like mm -hmm. why don't we have you know what from from the advice really meaning permission right <laughs> to having you know people meddling all in all in your life like why why are you on business like this yeah, yeah yes yeah. you know it's good to get advice 
Mm-hmm. But when it goes past that, then it's an, then it's an issue. Right. Um, right. Yeah. Chiki, what, what about you? What, what was some, um, I know you have a, a lot more of a sample size to work with. What was, what was some, I mean, and spill them all if you want to, but what, what were all the, the, the red flags, the, the yellow flags that you saw? I guess my main thing was, I think that, and I think I'm going to probably feel a little differently about it since I was around longer. And I don't know, maybe I'm tied to people more or not even tied to people. I mean, you know me, I love, I love everybody, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But I think, I think for me, um, even now, what always triggers me is feeling like, is feeling like things are, um, I won't say scripted, just aren't necessarily genuine or just, um, yeah, you're not looking at the individual, what they have going on, Mm -hmm. really taking them as a whole into consideration, right? Focusing on the situation and helping them where they're at, like, not like I still to this day believe that, you know, sharing the Bible with people is great, Mm -hmm. teaching each other is great, like, that's not an, I'm not negotiating that, you know. But I think that the way it was done or the focus, like really focusing on that particular individual and not like the masses getting in the, you know what I mean? Like just mm-hmm. loving that individual where they're at, that individual, one person at a time. I think that's kind of what mm. kind of started throwing me off. Not that people didn't care about people. I don't think that people didn't care, but I think sometimes the way things were done, just kind of for me, I was like, even for me, like I used to help lead a Bible talk. Mm-hmm. And you know me, I'm like, if you want to tell me, you're going to tell me. If you don't. Right. You ain't finna go I'm trying fine to probe that. out of somebody, right? Yeah. Like, I'm like, I'm here. And I, even to this day, like, because even now it's funny at work, like I manage a group of people. And I think they're always surprised. because I'm like, I just love you as a person. Like, I care about you as a human. Yeah. So whatever we can do to help your situation, let's do that. And I think that's just the way for me, I feel like personally, I feel like if you're going to be a Christian, I feel like that's what God wants you just to love people. Right. Right. It doesn't have to be super complicated. I don't think it needs to be. I think that takes away from the it being genuine. I think he just wants us to love people and do do or do right. Like, I don't <laughs> like for people to feel pressured. I don't like for people to feel forced to do something if that's not in their heart to do. I just yeah. want people to feel like they can be themselves. And if they want to do right or not, same way for me, right? I'm human. I'm going to make my decisions. I just want to be there to love and support them in that whether or not they decide to come to church that day or not. Like, mm. I'm not going to be harassing them if they don't come to church that day. Yeah, I'm just going to love them where they're at, you know? And sometimes work happens, you know, that doesn't mean I'm a derelict and I don't love God and, you know, I'm uh-huh. going to hell. doesn't mean all that. just means I didn't come Man. that day. Oof. Sometimes I was going to church and struggling <laughs> with all the sin under the sun. It yeah. has nothing to do with anything. Right. So my thing, again, like that, what kind of threw me off and kind of was like creating a bad taste And my mouth was just feeling like, again, it's not about attendance. Yeah, being, you want to be pulled in wherever you're at. Whatever organization you're a part of, you want to engage, right? Right. But I don't want that to be associated with me not trying to do right. If I'm not at every single thing or if I stop going to church on Sunday because I can or Mm -hmm. because I want to figure out what church I want to go to. I want to consider a church outside of ICOC that I feel like might better meet my needs. Like even now, I'm like, with what's going on with my son or my family... I might go somewhere else, you know, like, I don't want to feel like it's so fixed. And I felt, I kind of felt like things were too, were kind of too rigid. Like let people, like God is everywhere. Let people figure out what right. their life needs to look like. So yeah. that, that was my thing. I just didn't feel like there was that freedom sometimes to really figure out what God wanted us to learn outside of people, that limited vision that people had for you. Like it wasn't me figuring it out. It was other people kind of trying to help me navigate and sometimes you just need to leave people you need to leave people alone let them figure it out yeah you know? stop, stop putting people in a box like you like and you got said. in a box yeah. right <laughs> oh man i had a I, i've shared this before those of y'all watching it at home uh i, I know I've, I've shared this story before but like i remember i was having the the it was on online on facebook i was having a discussion with uh it was a one girl who, who was coming out the bible talk Mm-hmm. And I think this the subject was we were talking about things that aren't actually in the Bible, but we treat them like they are, like the whole mm-hmm. come as I think we were talking about come as you are, because come as you are isn't actually in the Bible. Right. And you know, back then I was like, if it ain't in the Bible, then we don't need to be 
you know, making a big deal about it or making the doctrine off of it. And she was, she said something to the effect of, well, you can't, you, you, you can't put God in the box, blah, blah, blah. And in hindsight, I agree with her. And at the moment I was like, mm -hmm. cause I, I, I think she was getting on, on me about the fact that limiting God to what was in the Bible. Right. Mm -hmm. And my dumb self said, I, I, we ain't putting God in the box. God put God in the box. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> yeah. I still got cringe <laughs> hearing myself say that right now. But back I think then, I was, stuff. Yeah. That makes yeah. us cringe. <laughs> Man. Yeah. But yeah, like trying to make everybody, trying to put <clears throat> these people, trying to put, trying to fit people in a box, trying to, well, mm -hmm. this is how we do things. So if you ain't right. following in line with this for whatever reason, no matter yeah. if it's a good reason or not, you got to fall in line with this. And if not, then, you know, yeah. there's one, speaking of, of like, missing church and things like that there was one i think he was a fullback for the seattle seahawks and i think he even wrote like a dpi book or something like that mm -hmm. and i'm thinking did y'all give him a hard time about missing church because sure, <laughs> surely, <Sunday. laughs> surely he plays on sunday right yeah. <laughs> you know so y'all let him y'all gave him a pass because he bring money in right right, right. <laughs> so but you know let one of us let one of us and that's this is not a knock to him this is a knock against the system you know you should yeah, be able yeah. to go do whatever your profession is and right. you know and do what you got to do um around that but let one of us average joe's miss sunday because we got to work mm -hmm. it's an issue mm -hmm. it's a whole ass problem right um, right but yeah yeah it's yeah. I'm, I'm jumping forward a little bit here but particularly what you mentioned about like you know whether we miss church for whatever reason so y'all have a four-year-old right mm -hmm. and and i think y'all mentioned he's on the on the spectrum too right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. hearing hearing you know his uh his age made me think of um because you know i, I left right i me and naya dating and then eventually getting married that coincides with my exit and so we had mm -hmm. uh we had uh, our oldest she's uh she's six now and we had her about a year and a half almost two years um into our marriage mm -hmm. so we so we still went to you know the church that we started going to after we still were going to church while she was pregnant mm -hmm. and you know we had our daughter we didn't go back to church for let me see because she was born in december we didn't go until February, almost March, because mm -hmm. it was you know flu season. You know she was right. Born in my plan with flu season. Right. right. In my plan with flu season. Right. right. And Naya was already fed up with people not respecting her bodily autonomy because everybody want to be all up close on her. Yep. Everybody want to rub the belly and all of that. And it's because <laughs> you're wrong if you come out and say, "Hey, don't don't touch me." <laughs> right. You're wrong if you say that. You know. And, and and mind you, at this time we're not in the ICOC, so so I, if that's with regular people, imagine saying <laughs> yeah. that with ICOC. Oh, you're not being loving. You're not, <laughs> you know, all that all that foolishness. Yeah, yeah. So she was already fed up with that. So mm -hmm. on, on top of cold, flu season, right? Baby ain't built up immunity yet, right? On top of all of that, it's mm -hmm. like okay, we don't if we didn't if we can't trust y'all to not touch her belly. We don't trust y'all to not hover over our newborn who is right. very susceptible to sickness right now. Mm -hmm. Right. So we we came we came back when we was ready. Right. Mm -hmm. I say that to say I can't imagine like I, I wasn't really close with any um couples who had newborns when, when I was there. Yeah. 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 Like I, the the couples I knew either didn't have kids or they already had kids to where I didn't get to witness how they handled um you know, just having a baby, bringing uh -huh. them to church, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I say, like I say, I'm like, I can't imagine us being in that position and still being ICOC, having somebody being like, where y'all at? You know, yeah. 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 It's, it's been a week. I haven't had a baby. Right. Where at, you know? <laughs> so, it, so we're, we're so you, were y'all, uh, were y'all still there when, when, uh, when your son was born? No. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. So, so y'all, nope. y'all, so y'all can't really, okay. I got you. I yeah. yeah. I mean, I was like, we, we visited randomly here and there. And the thing yeah. I can say is the people that we visited, I didn't feel like there's any kind of weird pressure. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because the people we're friends we keep in touch with from ICOC, I do feel like are genuine. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we visited, but yeah. I mean for me personally, I just felt like yeah. I felt like it was kind of like not what we needed, especially with what was going on with AJ. I want to feel like wherever we take him, they have a ministry catered for that. I don't want to be the one to come in and create that. I'm not at a place where I'm trying to come to church mm, yeah. and create that environment. And right. I, I just don't want to. Or if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it somewhere else. It kind of is already has that, have neural yeah. divergence kind of already on the in their you know framework in their mind. So I don't have to try to teach everything. Like I just, yeah, it's too much. So that was my thing. I, can um, I just didn't want to have to go there and create that environment. Yeah, I'm tired. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know this at the time because I had no. I had no. Um. Grasp of anything, any any neurodivergence, no nothing with mental health. I had no grasp of, um, depression. I had no grasp of any anybody under the lgbtq umbrella like right i'm saying this to say i'm if i know if i didn't and i didn't hear about it from anybody there and this is this is not a knock to the people again this is a knock to the system nobody there is equipped to deal with um neurodivergence right. autism mm-hmm. depression um yeah anything like that any anybody <clears throat> who feels like they're not binary anybody who feels like they you know I'm trying not to say struggle because you know I, I'm. <laughs> I, I left my I left my homophobia my uh, LGBTQ phobia back mm-hmm. at that church because like yeah I, yeah I left on and my eyes kind of just open anyway mm-hmm. I, yeah nobody's equipped for that right mm-hmm. but yet we were not just with kids but like how many people can you look back now and say dang, this person was struggling with depression. This person has some mental health issues. And right, we, right, right. we just right. gave them a cookie cutter scripture and kept it moving. Right, right. right. They were right. asking us to to deal with this stuff. And we we are, none of us are trained for it. Yeah. Right, right. But, you know, we, we were trained to account it to unconfessed sin. Right. Yeah. And all that foolishness. Yeah. Ooh. Um, and, and, you know, just, you know, just, just, you know, kind of speaking on that, because as y'all was talking, you know, I was kind of thinking about a few things. So, you know, even how we were just talking about confessing and everything. So with, with one of the main D groups that I was in at the time, um, like I said, you know, I, I, I kind of do feel that it was forced, um, one reason why I felt that way was because it was hard to um, express or even confess things because I just didn't feel that you know we really connected on that level, yeah. and and then too you know so you know I was never in uh, uh, leadership you know mm-hmm. so what i found out was and you know i i don't know how true this was but it it was like you know the things that we were you know discussing d group whether someone was uh struggling with something um confessing something um a good amount of that would get reported back up to leadership which i didn't know at the time so you know i'm I'm kind of confessing something, but then, you know, like once I find out, okay, well, this stuff is, you know, just kind of getting reported up the flagpole to people whom I might not even know that well. And like, I, this is a very, you know, personal stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, it, like that kind of, you know, it, it, it kind of like made me kind of like take a step back because for one, I'm like, okay, you know, the leader, you know, you're asking these questions. You know, like, do you like? Are you genuinely concerned, or are you just doing what you're trained to do? You know, right. because as you know, you you could just be trained to okay, go around ask these questions, you know, point out the scripture as to what you're dealing with, and keep it moving. But you know, it's um, you know, I, I definitely didn't feel that it was all the way genuine, like all the time. I felt that. It was just kind of in a situation where we were just kind of forced to do what we had to do. And it's it kind of makes me think of, um, you know, I say let's let's say, for example, um, you know, 
like my mom and your mom are like best friends. Right. And you and I are like, you know, 10 years old and uh, we don't know each other. Mm -hmm. And then my mom goes to your mom's house, brings me and say, hey, Adam, you know, uh, this is Myron. Play with him. You know, y'all are both the same age. Become best friends. Right. And then me and you stand each other like, you know, we don't even really like each other. You're like, why right. we got to be I best friends? You. Right. So like, that's that. That's kind of how like I felt in the D group. Like, we're, we're not, you know, we were placed together. But for us to be discussing and, you know, doing the stuff that we were doing, um, it, 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 it just didn't seem very... Uh, I guess, you know, like uh, fundamental. So, and yeah. I really, I, I think it kind of worked for some people, but it, it really didn't work that well for myself. Man, just hearing you say that reminds me of how, you know, again, back then I had no idea of this at all, but, and I, I don't claim to be a mental health expert even now, but knowing what I do know now, nobody is going to nobody in their right mind nobody who knows better is going to be vulnerable with someone who has not shown that person that right. they're safe to be vulnerable with mm. you just don't do that you don't do <laughs> you, you don't make yourself vulnerable when it's not safe to well, you shouldn't right yeah right <laughs> so ta tangenting for a second but to to, to nail that point I forget when I read this, but I was I was reading a story about how there was like a farmer who had a um I don't know if it was a goat, a calf, or whatever. It was a the but the, the animal was pregnant. And mm -hmm. the the farmer made like this little area in the barn and made it all a little nice and 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 presentable and, and, and special looking and blah blah blah. And the mama wouldn't did not come to that area. Eventually they found the the mom or whatever off in some little seclu secluded area of the barn and all of a sudden they, they had already had the babies that babe that mama did not feel safe in that area because they knew because everybody was going to be watching and waiting mm -hmm. and i you know double tangent double tangent you know that's why you know me and i are like why do people have like their whole freaking family in the in the delivery room when you about yeah. to push your baby out oh. it makes no sense <laughs> right too much yeah it's too much i don't need I'll, i did not want to look there yeah. while it was happening <laughs> and i and that's my child coming out right right so why 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 do we want a whole bunch of other people everybody there? like oh. <laughs> right people taking selfies up in the anyway to further <laughs> nail down the point you're not going to be vulnerable if you don't feel safe to do so. Mm -hmm. Just like the mama, whatever the animal that was, they didn't feel safe to have the babies there. So they went somewhere where they knew eyes weren't going to be all on them. They... Mm -hmm. So it was like, even from the jump, when we're in our studies, we're in sin and repentance, light, darkness, whatever the name of the, the study is, mm -hmm. you're supposed to name every sin you've ever done to somebody you just met days ago okay. <laughs> but that's required of us and we ain't getting into heaven if we don't do that right yeah all right so that's bad enough but you know now you're 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 a disciple now and you're in d groups and you're sharing stuff with people you may or may not be close with mm -hmm. and it's like why are we expecting that of people oh, why are we maybe. expecting people to do that with somebody who may or may not be safe to share with mm -hmm. especially as you said in Excuse me, I didn't know what was happening back then, but in, in hindsight, I know I, I know what was happening just from hearing so many other testimonies. This stuff is going up the pipe. This stuff is being told to all, all of leadership. Right. So it's like what they basically yet yet are being trained to do it, and they're also being trained to do it to as information collecting it. Mm -hmm. and some would even say, I don't I don't know this by my own experience, but some would even say that they were doing it for the purpose of having dirt on people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, why yeah. aren't, aren't we supposed to not be gossiping? Isn't that a sin too? Right, right, right. This is facts. So, yeah. So leaping from that to something else, you know, so y'all dated together. Y'all dated at the church and they got, were, were y'all married before y'all left or after? No, we were married in the church. Okay. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So talk to me about y'all's, um, y'all process of getting together and then 
get married because I'm, I'm trying not to lead y'all with this but what made me think of this was the fact that you know you met y'all mission control earlier we we're talking mm-hmm. about d group and all the information going out the pipe i remember jiggy i know you remember this way back mm-hmm. in the day before the letter drop you know you would have that had letter the... drop <laughs> <New album. laughs> so, church up yeah wow. you would have had to so adam would have had to talk to his disciple or his disciple would have had to talk to yours to talk to you and y'all would never would have been allowed i hate it the, the fact that that word is there <laughs> y'all would never have been allowed to talk to talk to each other directly and what i found out later is I, i'm thinking okay maybe it's just going through you know your disciple or their disciple or them but it's going up through the ministry too and what i've been learning um from other people's experiences it was that leadership is up there doing checks and balances like mm, i don't think they're going to be good together no nah, we should they we should discourage them from being together um, mm-hmm. or uh, and don't don't be a leader and the person you're interested in is not or vice versa mm-hmm. they shutting that yeah. down mm-hmm. so was that did y'all feel any of that in y'all's did dating you feel that? And, and married process <laughs> did you feel that, Adam? <laughs> um so i mean uh i guess starting on the dating part um you know, maybe I just kind of came on the tail end of everything, but you know, as far as dating, um, I can honestly say that I really didn't go through that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, I I've, I've definitely heard stories from you know people that were there back mm-hmm. in the day yeah. of happening the exact way that you just described it. But no, um, <clears throat> no, I mean, it was just you know pretty you know simple. You know, we you know went on a few dates, um, and then from there we just made it official. Um, and you know, and you know, I I, I did you know because I I, I kind of wanted to you know play the game, so I did you know get advice, um, but only from people whom I know know knew her. So yeah. I, I wasn't just going to just some random person just because they were in leadership saying, hey, you know, because I I don't know if they really knew her or not, and that could just mess up the whole process if you don't yeah, know her. Yeah. So, you know, I definitely, um, you know, went with people that I knew and for them, um, furthermore, the person that I've started with, as y'all just, you know, as we were talking about at the beginning of the video, um, she has family there and her sister was there. So like what better person to start with than her? So that's what I started with, you know, um, and, um, you know, from there, I just from the people that was close to her, I went to the people that I was close to because I wasn't always close to everyone that was in leadership. Yeah. But there there were some people there that I did trust. Um, I trusted their opinion, um, whether it was good or bad. And, you know, you know, the uh, I think we dated for like a year and a half. Um so one, you know, once we got engaged and, and, you know, even with the getting engaged process, um, you know, I didn't tell a lot of people. Um, I told who, I, you know, who I needed to tell. Um, and uh, like that was about it. But I did notice like a very, very big red flag. Like once we got mm-hmm. engaged. So mm-hmm. <clears throat> once we got engaged, you know, Advice is always given, you know, um, I'll listen to it. Sometimes I might take it. Sometimes I'm not. uh, Sometimes I may not. So it was a case where I think like we had, you know, just been engaged like maybe a couple of weeks. Right. And, you know, this 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 brother who was in leadership. So like when when we first got engaged, he was like, you know, something that you should, you know, consider doing is, you know, waiting until waiting until um, you have your first uh, marriage counseling um, session before you book your venue. And um, because he was saying, you know, sometimes, you know, just might not work out. So, you know, give it some time, like have your session first and then book Mm. your venue. So I'm okay. well, you know, that's 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 advice. I really didn't, you know, think of it any more past that. So Mm. as you know, you know, you're you know, y'all got married. venues don't come cheap and you know no, this was no. 10 years ago yeah so yeah. you know we found on the venue, venue. you got to get that jump like a year out Wait. right yes. yeah so you know we you know we found one um 
and we booked it probably within like three weeks of us you know being engaged um and you know going back to the conversation with that one leader this was before we had our first um marriage counseling session i forgot about that so, yeah so you know uh, you know we we book it um and i guess word got out that you know we had a meeting you so I, I i think i was like leaving the gym or somewhere and he called me mm -hmm. and i think you know like had we just talked about it i might not have gotten like as mad as i did but like the some of the words that he used so he was like yeah you know i, I thought i thought that we uh i thought that we agreed that you know you would uh <laughs> <laughs> that you would wait until you had your first session until we you know and, and, until we you know got, got the video we so at that point like i pulled over because like my like my boy like my blood is Man. like i'm starting to, to rise so i'm like you know bro I'm, I'm like bro you know we we ain't paying for this venue you know i am see like we as in me and him right so i'm like you know You're i contributed nothing right exactly you know you, you know you ain't chipping in you ain't giving nothing and it, you know like, i appreciate what you know what you know the advice that you're giving but um you know that's what it is advice and you know it and it i still like don't think it's really stuck to him because i think he was so fixated on on me you know just doing like what he said Mm -hmm. And at that point, like that's when I was like, you know, I and we didn't really leave, like leave then, but at that point I was like, you know, I I don't know because you know it, it, if if you feel that you have that like that much stake in my life and like yeah. we're not even cool, then right. that's you know like that's yeah. an issue. Wow, man, yeah. and this may or may not have been his motivation for doing that but all i could think of was i've heard of i've heard other people's testimonies where they where they dated and or got engaged against the advice of the leaders mm -hmm. and, and and we ain't talking about date somebody outside the church we just talking about you know two disciples getting together and leadership didn't approve of their relationship. And in those cases, they could not get counseling, they could not get advice, advice. or any advice that they got was leading toward, oh, well, maybe, you know, maybe this isn't gonna work out, maybe y'all should break up. So basically, mm -hmm. um, as soon as you said that, I was like, was this person trying to insinuate that Hmm, we don't approve of their relationship. So I'm gonna so we're gonna say, hey, maybe mm -hmm. you should have that first counseling session before you book the venue. Mm -hmm. And and maybe because maybe they're and again, I don't know that that was what the the motivation was. Right. That's right. where my mind went as soon as you said that. I was like, <laughs> and then somehow I, I thought we had agreed to we ain't agreed to shoot. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Me and you. Well, well, my whole thing with that, that's where it comes in being genuine, right? Like if you're yeah. my friend and you think you're concerned that I'm getting with someone that's not good for me, yeah, say that. Right. Like don't, don't shut don't... and jive. And that's been my whole thing with anything, with mm. church, with anybody I deal with, inside of church, outside of church. Yeah. I need you to be honest and genuine. If you're concerned about something, say say what you're concerned about. Like be forthcoming. Yeah. Don't be around I mean, the bush with that. Yeah. Like, I, that if you want to make my blood boil, that's what mm -hmm. makes my blood boil. Yeah. It reminds me of how many times have you heard? Well, everything's beneficial. <laughs> that part. Well, co well, come on out and say it then. Right. Like, anytime what you somebody to say? Say, anybody anybody said that to me, I'd be like, okay, cool. Yeah. Because you just said everything is beneficial, but not that everything is permissible, permissible, but, but not, not beneficial. beneficial. Right. And I'm say, and I'd be like, well, it ain't not, it ain't not not beneficial. Right. Exactly. So yeah. if you, if you really genuinely think that what i'm doing is sin come on out and say that right because if you don't come out and directly say that because you know or, or sometimes people would kind of joke about um joke about stuff i remember um i'm trying to remember his name I, I know he was the son of somebody big um jonathan lang i think i think he was and this is back when i first started like getting heavy in the salsa scene right i remember mm -hmm. he leaving some kind of co uh comment like you're a regular Lou Bega out there. And I'm like, 
What? What, what are you? I, I get the feeling you're trying to say something, but you ain't coming out and saying it. Right. <laughs> like if you if you legit have an issue with what I'm doing, come on out and tell me. Come right. on. And th- and this is old conflict avoiding people pleasing me mm-hmm. you know, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm still recovering from that but i'm like years better than i was yeah, yeah. back then i'm like why don't you just come on out and just say what you right, what you right, say? right. otherwise mm-hmm. i'm gonna keep it moving All right, right. I'm, I'm gonna treat your little joke exact as exactly what it is a little joke i'm gonna, I'm gonna do i'm gonna do me right, right. right. yeah yeah so jiggy you being on both on both sides of the letter and um <laughs> I apologize for bringing up old stuff, but I know no, you're, you're good. Been, you've been through this process both before and <laughs> after the letter. What was it? What was it like on both? Was it was it a breath of fresh air the second time for you? Hold on, the first letter or the second letter? Because they were two, weren't they? Oh, am I thinking about the Henry? No, I'm thinking, my bad. I'm thinking that was a letter. Was I'm there another letter? It, no, that wasn't a letter. That was more not. like a proclamation. Okay, yeah. forget yeah. it. Scratch that. Yeah, but t- um, techni- technically, there was. I think there was more than one attempt at making such a thing but i think that one hit because it was somebody from from uh from like the world sector leader level yeah so i think that and i found out recently that that was never meant for us somebody leaked it sounds about right yeah Mm. anyway but yeah so before so i I know you you dated but uh, was it yeah i think it was somebody dating like on both sides if 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 it was either Either it was right before or right after. Mm-hmm. Uh, we gonna we gonna call him A, you and A. <laughs> right. I, I I feel like it now that I'm thinking of it. I think it might have been right. It was after, right after. I right think. after, like letter. right, literally right after. Yeah, because I remember him wanting salsa lessons too, because he wanted to Im- impress you. So yeah, I'm like, okay, well. this this tracks with <laughs> this tracks with being right after the letter. Mm-hmm. But I think it was close enough to where it might might have still had some residuals from absolutely the old, the old process but and it's funny you said that because i remember i remember feeling like oh the relief but then seeing that like in my mind i'm like why is this such a big deal like clearly we know that some of the stuff was super extra and didn't need to be happening like it wasn't for yeah. me it wasn't like a revelation i was like finally y'all caught up with the rest of us <laughs> right you thought it was crazy <laughs> but then you saw this like disparity of people who were just so like attached to the system mm-hmm. like okay so I felt like what I saw then and even a little bit before after, hold on, before and after, is that people were just so fixated on the system mm-hmm. and not the heart of the heart they were trying, <laughs> the heart of what they were trying to do. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I guess my thing is like after that letter came, I would have thought that there would have been a bigger change, honestly. Like there it was it was a system. And systems are okay, like outside to me, I feel like systems are okay in the proper environment, but when it comes to you know your spirituality and Mm -hmm. your righteousness i feel like that kind of needs to not be so we don't need to be so fixated on system it's really the heart of it and everybody's situation isn't going to look the same so i guess my thing was like why was this even a thing but yeah i guess there i did feel a huge i did feel a um, a big shift Mm -hmm. um or a shift after the letter came out i do feel like there was more in a sense freedom um and not that we weren't, didn't, how do I say this? I felt like there was more freedom in a sense, but I felt like some people in leadership and just people who, just some people still were having a hard time letting go yeah. of what they thought was right. Like the people who wanted freedom were like lawless and irreverent <laughs> and unholy. And, you know, yeah. it was still kind of that association with the freedom that came, the freedom that came, mm-hmm. you know, but even that is crazy thinking about it because we allowed our, I don't know, this is just me talking. Mm-hmm. I know for me, I try not to let anybody limit my view on things. Like, not that in, not in a prideful way, like I'm always willing to listen to people's advice or input and consider it. But I think that's the thing. It's like, I'm considering it. You're not right. going, unless it's the Bible said it, this is the correct interpretation, 100% that I'm just going to, follow without question right. outside of that you're gonna get some questions and not in the pipe <laughs> way like i want to you know right. why are you telling me this what's the reasoning behind it i'll consider the advice because that mm. point is advice but i'm not just going to do anything so i guess for me it was kind of like 
I felt the difference when I would go to church, but since that's always been my nature. Yeah. And I can't even say I learned that from church. That's my parents. My parents were like, you're not just going to be following whoever. Like, you need to have your own mind, you know? Right. <clears throat> so that's just the way I was raised. I'm not going to just. And at first, they weren't feeling the church when I started coming. And this is totally tangible. But to all your parents? No, they, they both weren't. And with good reason, mm -hmm. because they felt like some people were mindless. Yeah. Like, you can't just be following people and not know why you're following. Right. And then, too, with some of the racial issues, like, you're black, you need to love being black. You need to love your natural everything. Mm. You need to, you can still be you as a black human, male or female, and be righteous. You don't have to eat yeah. to change to be sharp, Ooh. to sound like Becky and damn, I'm, I'm black. I'm Nigerian. Right. I'm going to sound like and look like how I look, and I'm going to love it. And I think that that was where their heart was coming um, from because even by the end of before my mom before my mom passed and after i've been in church for a while like all the people who were disciples loved her and were going to her for advice you know what i mean like it's yeah. but that was because they saw that i was genuinely changing that i still love and respected them even though they weren't okay with me going to church because they saw i had my own mind they saw mm -hmm. that i was thinking through why i was doing it and not just aimlessly following whoever and not to say on all of that i got my own issues trust Mm -hmm. But I do feel like if I make a mistake, I'm going to own up to my mistake. If right. I'm going to follow something, I'm going to know why I'm following it at that time. Whether or not I look back at it five or ten years and I'm like, that was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> that was my decision to make. But I yeah, right. assessed my info and made the best choice I felt. And I take ownership for that. So that was totally. But yeah. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Let, let, let's let's park on that that racial issues thing real quick because I, I want to hit that and let's put a pin on singing because I know that's a shiggy that's a shared experience you and I right. have. It, it was a, <laughs> a huge double edged sword for me. Right. So I want to hit that before we wrap up too. But the racial issues because like I'm only in hindsight realizing how bad that was. Mm -hmm. The one thing that really stood out to me was. Because I was not, I'm trying not to use woke because I hate how woke has been appropriated. How right. It's been, They've decimated it. It's been, turned, it. It's, it's been turned into an insult. <laughs> right. Anyway, I, I, I ain't going to go down that tangent because I'm going <laughs> to derail the whole video. Anyway, <laughs> I was a lot less socially aware of oppression back then. <laughs> um, and But the one thing that really stood out for me, and again, I those y'all who are watching at home i've said this in at least one video before um so contrasting what we had in atlanta versus what i had in tallahassee when i was when i was there that's where i got baptized at we you know this was not part for the course for um icoc at all we had our own building our own brick and mortar building everybody met there wednesday and uh, sunday and of course friday, campus met there friday but Campus, teens, singles, super singles, marries, everybody. Not super singles. Yeah, yeah, that was that was their that was their turn oh, hey. for right, right. Uh -oh. Yeah. So <laughs> we all met together every Wednesday, every Sunday. So we got to see oh. everybody. It was a change for me when I moved back home to Atlanta and all of a sudden I find out campus is its own entity by itself. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. So and you know how you know how we did prior to the letter we was always meeting at sheridan colony square we <laughs> the, the the hotel ballroom there right sheridan buckhead um mm -hmm. so we meeting there every wednesday every friday every sunday that's a whole lot of money and mm -hmm. I, I think i'm speculating here I'm, i think we could do that because we were being financed by the rest of the church by the rest of the church's contribution because we we meeting there off of campus as well we ain't had that money <laughs> right. right most of us ain't got jobs most of us if we got money it's because we got our net check or whatever <laughs> or, or some or some of the some of us was trust fund not us not not but me. but sure. some of us was trust fund babies in there we was getting right. money from the from the parents which probably rolls into the, the latter half of this point so after the, the letter drop, we couldn't meet together no more. I think probably because we weren't being financed by the rest of the church, there was like mm -hmm. this audits going on in the backside. So all the, all the 
mostly or all white campus ministries got shipped off with branches of the church that matched that. So your Georgia State, Georgia Tech, Kennesaw, they all went with churches that matched that demographic. Right. Everybody in everybody in AU, for those of y'all at home that don't know all the um the all the HBCUs, historically black colleges and universities. I realize I'm gonna break all that down too. Um in Atlanta, Clark Atlanta. Uh, Morris Spelman, Brown, yeah, Morehouse. Spelman, uh, Spelman Morehouse, mm-hmm. um, uh, Morris Brown. Back when it was still legit, I think it's. Mm-hmm. I think it came back. I think it got reaccredited. I think. Yes, yes. amen mm-hmm. to that. I think you know Georgia State kind of fell into that category too. Mm. Cause... Well, we was kind of in the middle because they was. <laughs> yeah, we Georgia, split. Georgia State was. Yeah, there, there, there was a divided. There. Right. <laughs> so the AU ministry. G, uh, Georgia Perimeter College and mm-hmm. anybody uh, I think I know Drew went to Atlanta Tech or mm-hmm. Atlanta Metro one of the two they anybody yeah. there was lumped in that too all of us we got shipped off to the mostly or all black ministries and I was just like something don't fit something don't seem right <laughs> to me with that mm-hmm. and you know in hindsight even if it's not racism I can kind of say it might have been rooted, rooted in racism because you might have had some the leaders being like look y'all branches of the church that are mostly lacking melanin y'all might not be able to handle (laughs) these kids (laughs) and that might and they might have looked at it as that was best for us because maybe they didn't want us to be negatively affected by having to assimilate with whatever was going on so and in one hand i think okay maybe there was some uh, maybe there was good heart behind it whether there was or not at that time, it didn't sit well with me. But you know, mm. not being the, not being the, uh, um, what, what, what can I say? I, I wasn't, I wasn't one of the ruffle feathers back then, so I wouldn't. It wasn't something I would have spoke up about mm-hmm. anyway. But that's the one thing that spoke that stuck out to me. What did, what did y'all see as far as racial issues when you were there? Um, well, I'll let you talk. You want to talk about that? Um, as far as uh, Did you really deal racial, with yeah, so I never really dealt with the, the racial part of, but 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 I will say um, Atlanta seemed different than other states. Mm. Um, so you know, you know, when I came in, you know, you you had this uh, this church here, it, you know, like your uh, North River is your GACC, your uh, back then I think it was AMCC. So like you had these different church um different churches mm-hmm. all in you know a close radius but it almost seemed like all of these churches were kind of beefing with each other like in a like in mm. a way because mm. you know if someone were to leave GCC and go to AMCC like oh like why are you going like why are you going over there you know like what's uh. what, what's over there you know and vice versa, you know, I AMCC, like they saw JCC as like this kitty land type place. Because you know, we we went there for for a while, you know. Um great people. But the separation, um, uh, and and what I want to point out is other states um uh, saw that too. Because like I would like, you know, like say if I would go and visit like the South Florida mm-hmm. ministry, because like I'm in Miami for that weekend, like they would always kind of they wouldn't ask it direct uh directly but like they would kind of beat around the bush like you know what's what's going on in atlanta you know like why is it so divided you know like or, you know like, what's what's the whole thing there and like i'm new so i'm thinking that the way that we are in that in in, in atlanta is how everyone is you mm-hmm. know i'm thinking that everyone is separated like that like you yeah. know there's a you know campus singles ministry uh that's predominantly black which is what i was accustomed to and then there was a north river Mm-hmm. that's mostly white and then like there was like uh you know this church over here and, and that church over there so when i went to you know like a florida church for the first time or like a south carolina church it's like everyone was together so um i can't really speak that much on the racism part because mm-hmm. I, I i really didn't um experience that because both ministries that i was a part of were were mostly black mm-hmm. but i can say that there was like a uh um divider yeah which i just became used to you know Mm. 
I mean, when I really saw it and experienced it, my, that was more like the end of my teen years heading into campus mm -hmm. and not even for all the campus. That was really campus before the letter. And I guess my thing with that is like, I feel like a lot of the people I know or I knew then, I don't feel like they were intentionally engaging in it. But if you're doing something again, which is my thing about doing things and not really thinking about the, the implications or why you're doing it, mm -hmm. you end up repeating the behavior and kind of reinforcing it. And that was my thing. Like my thing was more like, okay, okay, this is my pet peeve. And a lot of people don't agree with me, but like even down to the being sharp thing used to make my blood boil. Ooh. Like Ooh. you're going to look the way God created you to look. And there's nothing right. wrong with that point blank yeah. period. I'm not going to look like Becky because I'm me and I love how I look. And mm -hmm. if we wear the same outfit, and you feel like you're going, like you're struggling because I'm wearing the outfit, even the same outfit she's wearing. Like, why should it matter? I have a body. I'm sorry, she only have the same body I have. Right. Like, and I think that was for me how it came out. Like, if she can we wear a two piece bikini and I can't, why? Oh, my goodness. You know? And I think oh, part of that, honestly, we have to look at our environment too, right? Yeah. I don't think everything was just a church being trifling. I think that it was, some of it is cultural, mm -hmm. American culture just black people being perceived as what's the word um you know what i mean like either being hypersexualized that's a whole nother yeah yeah whole nother conversation um uh what's the other word i think that's the main thing or um i want to say being seen different in or less than unless you like are overly good at something like yeah i feel like it's a combination of things right. but i oh, feel like at the end of the day and, yeah yeah if we're i guess my thing my struggle with church was like i'm supposed to come to church and we're supposed to be set apart right we're supposed to be different than the world mm -hmm. so if i'm coming here and you're perpetuating the same foolishness that i have to deal with when i'm at work when i'm in the street why am i going to come right so i mean i was still going but for me it was kind of like where's the relief at yeah so I think that I felt yeah. that, yeah, an earlier campus. But then for me, when I came over, when I, because um, at first I was going to predominantly white church and after the letter, and I didn't mind it, you know, but I also mm. didn't feel like, but maybe that's just me too. Like I like to be around more diversity. Yeah, yeah. So I personally felt like uncomfortable and I try to be friends and love everybody, but I felt like, ugh. like, and not in a mean way, just. I didn't feel comfortable. <laughs> so I started going somewhere else. But then yeah. even when I went to the other place I was going to, I was like, there are people at every church I went to that I felt like I loved and who were genuine and who really, really cared about me. And I'm grateful because I think a lot of people didn't have that experience. But mm -hmm. I, every single ministry I went to, I felt like I had that safety net or that a few people that I just, I know at the end of the day, whether I went to church or not, whether I was, however I was being, they care about me. And I still feel like I have some of those relationships now. Um, not all of them, but some of them. But yeah, I guess for me, it was just, yeah, it, it was, it wasn't horrible with the racism. I think that people more like who are older than me, mm -hmm. who've been around maybe five or 10 years more thinking about people like my sister's age, they more heavily dealt with that yeah. and they more saw it hands on, honestly. Mm -hmm. But personally, I don't feel like I dealt with it as much, but I did see traces of it and, you know, kind of experienced things because, you know. Pretty much the example I gave you is what I felt the most. But right. outside of that, I guess, again, myself too, like, I'm always about preserving myself. I'm not going to associate myself with people who do that. So for me, yeah. when I saw that and when I was singing and I felt that, I stopped singing. Mm -hmm. I didn't care. You know, I'm not yeah. going to allow myself to be that environment or feel like I have to change up my whole self for for that. Like, it, I don't feel like that's not necessary for me to do it, to be a disciple or a Christian or whatever. Yeah. I can go yeah. do this somewhere else, you know, so that was exactly. my that was my experience yeah something you said reminded me of this was another thing that was harped on the whole imitate your leaders thing mm -hmm. like i feel like that was taken way too far you know similar to how you say you know i'm not gonna look like this person over here because right i'm mm -hmm. different my body's different mm -hmm. i didn't really pick it up too much when i was in tallahassee but when i got to atlanta i definitely saw it in au all the brothers were dressing like Nahisi. All the sisters were dressing like Patricia. <laughs> mm -hmm. Everybody that went to GSU was dressing like whoever was leading them. Like mm -hmm. every, so it was just like, 
I'm pretty sure in the Bible where it says the imitate your leaders, it wasn't talking about all the way down to their mannerisms and manner. It's right. like, just imitate me as I follow Christ. Like that's mm -hmm. really what it was. But like it got taken all the way down to like the speech patterns, how to, how they dress. And I was just like, I'm not that I wanted to move up, but I'm wondering maybe that's why I never got, because I, I got asked to be a, not asked, I got voluntold to be a Bible talk leader <laughs> when I was in a, when I was in Tallahassee, but it never happened in Atlanta. And I'm kind of grateful for it, but I also mm -hmm. kind of wonder why. And I have to wonder if it was just because I didn't, I didn't assimilate. I didn't, you yeah. know, imitate everybody around me. I just kind of, I was off. I was the only campus disciple at DeVry. Mm -hmm. And so I, I was kind of out on the outskirts anyway. And because yeah. of my job, I was, uh, I was only coming Sunday. I couldn't, I couldn't make Friday Devo. Well, no, I could make Friday Devo, but I had to leave early. Oh. Something like that. Yeah. I was on the outskirts. So I guess, yeah. I guess that, was, that was part of it too. But I was just like, why everybody looking the same? This is looking, looking like the, this, 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 the mm -hmm. Borg, the Borg or something with the world. <laughs> um, so, so that, and add a backtrack into what you were saying about how, you know, things in Atlanta didn't seem to be the same as every, everywhere else. Something I learned recently, um, y'all go check out um i believe nikita lambert she has a, a channel and our boy richard was on there recently mm -hmm. um sharing a, a y'all just go check out the video my angle mm -hmm. i ain't gonna i'm gonna spoil it for everybody it's it's a long video but it's it goes into a little bit of what we're talking about and the part of that that's relevant is he would he would go out of town somewhere and somebody would ask you know, hey, hey, where are you from? You say, and he said Atlanta. People would automatically assume he was talking about North River, mm -hmm. and so the the, the the shorten this up. Apparently, GACC where we were at apparently didn't have the best reputation outside of Atlanta, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So, like, I didn't know that at the time because I didn't do a whole lot of. I think I was instead of going to campus uh, i'm sorry instead of going to like singles retreats i was on my salsa congress vibe back then so if i was going out of town i was going for that yeah so, yeah. I, so I must have missed out on you know going to all these other you know retreats and conferences besides a and e for us mm -hmm. yeah. so i'm not catching none of this vibe but you know in hindsight i'm seeing that yeah i, I apparently we must have not had apparently G, uh, apparently north river was the the valid church yeah, yeah in atlanta yeah. <laughs> and gacc wasn't i don't know yeah but yeah before we wrap up chiggy how did you feel about i know you touched on a little bit with the sharp thing mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna do a whole other video on that because that's the i'm glad that word got banned i'm, I'm pretty sure uh, a <laughs> lot of people were are, are glad that it got banned but what what was your experience uh you know singing on stage at, at church I, I know for me I liked doing it. I I, I liked singing. I kind of hated how many rehearsals we had, <laughs> and I also hated the fact that there was there were so few brothers and so many sisters. Like y'all had a rotation. We really did. We we, we ain't had no chilling. we ain't had no break. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, what, what yeah. was it? What was it like for you? The, the, the good and the good and the bad with that. I mean, honestly, outside of the experience I had when I was in um. When I was in the the initial campus before, really, I think that campus way before you got there, Adam. But Myron, I don't even know if you were there when I. I, I mean, I think it was wait. It, you were probably still in Tallahassee. That for me was the, the off putting mm -hmm. singing experience. But post that situation, for me, it was good. I felt like I do, and I think that's where I feel like God really kept me in there, or not kept me in there, but kept me. That's part of a huge part of why I kept wanting to go to church because of the relationships I built with the people I sang with. Yeah. Like outside of all the people, um, um, I felt like some of the sisters and the brothers, most of the brothers I sang with, I do feel like it was genuine relationships. I felt like we really cared about each other. Yeah. And I enjoyed it. And but I think for me, you know, for me singing is even now, like when I'm feeling things and I'm going through things, that's when I go to, I go to singing. Like it's how I worship, it's how I deal with things. So for me, 
singing wasn't just simply singing on stage, it was more. So when I was going through those hard times, it kind of helped heal me in a sense, if that makes sense, or it kind of helped me connect, reconnect. So for me, singing wasn't simply singing. And I do feel like people, especially when I was with GACC, I do feel like, I do feel like that was kind of more the the heart behind why we were singing. Because mm-hmm. like, let's be honest, we weren't always technically there. We were. mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I do feel like, um, I do feel like the heart was there to really want to sing and praise God yeah. and worship with the music. So for me, it was a good thing. Um, and I sang in another ministry after that. And I felt pretty decent about that as well. So, um, <clears throat> but again, because of where my mind is when I sing, there may have been stuff going on. I just, you know, yeah, <laughs> but yeah. that's just because that's where my mind is when I'm singing. I don't, I don't even see all the other things. If anything's going on, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I think I did catch the tail end of what you were talking about. Um, oh, you did? Yeah. Cause I remember my, my first you know, couple of years in Atlanta, it was always the same five people on stage every daggum time. Uh. And I remember um, Caleb, he, you know, Caleb did the sound uh, in our later days there. I remember hearing some horror stories from him saying that he ended up having to turn some people's mics down because they couldn't actually off. sing. Turn them things off. <laughs> so it was literally just the sharp people on stage, regardless of they, if they could sing. And I know, I know for a fact, I know Patricia could sing. Mm-hmm. She could blow. She could, she could get down. Yeah. Right. Other than that, I was like, I don't know about the rest of them. Um, um, mm. <laughs> but wow um <laughs> i had something else that i that i thought of and it just escaped me mm. oh well it'll it'll come to me after we stop but um <laughs> so to, to, to wrap up here I, I know y'all y'all what was what was the final or the, the the straw that broke the camel's back to so to speak. What what was what was the thing that really made y'all say, you know what, this time we out. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, you know, <clears throat> it was it was kind of like a thing where like there really wasn't like a final blow. Mm-hmm. I think I just kind of checked out mentally. Mm-hmm. Um. And, you know, this was, you know, after we were married already. And, you know, we we didn't really have, like, a discussion about, like, you know, hey, you know, we're going to stop going this Sunday. Mm-hmm. This Sunday has got, um, you know, more and more few. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, we would just, you know, kind of go around. But I think, like, what I, I, I just really started connecting with God, um, you know, in a way where like I needed to, um, and 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 that's not always going to be in any um, particular church, mm-hmm. um, and you know just 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 kind of uh, uh you know a, a thing that I just kind of want to you know end on. So you know, with scripture, you know, like the the scripture is always going to be living. You know, that's mm-hmm. the living word, and I think so many times, you know, people want, you know, well, there were so many cases where leadership wanted, you know, like us to meet, mm-hmm. kind of like meet them where they were with the scripture, you know, like as, as, as far as, you know, us taking the scripture and say, okay, like understand this, um, you know, this is what, you know, Paul is saying, or, you know, like this is what is being read. And what I came to realize as I got older was, um, some things you're just not going to get whether it's scripture or life until it's time for you to get it Mm, um yeah and you know what i mean by that is you know say for you know like uh, for example and you know this is the true story so you know um uh life jennings Mm -hmm. when he came out with his first album um this is like oh five oh six um you know, I, I think I, you know, bought the CD, you know, this is back when we had CDs, whatnot. Um, <laughs> Why do we feel so old right now? I know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Just so uh, obsolete now. Um, so, you know, like I, I bought the album and at that time I'm like 19, 20. 
And you know, for 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 those that that have never heard, you know, Life's first album, like that was you know about you know just him going through things, uh, his relationship, you know, you know dealing with his kids, like dealing with baby mama stuff. So you know, me being twenty, you know, I, you know some of the songs were catchy, but I think like after like a week, I listened to it in the car, and then just threw it in my uh, CD case. Right, right. You know, so then you know, fast forward. Um, like five or six years later, like after like I'd gone through some stuff, like after like I'd gone through life, gone mm-hmm. through the failed relationships, you know, just going through my issues, you know, from you know, um, you know, dealing with being a co-parent, you know, working with a parent who you're not with. Um, all of a sudden, like his album, like the same one that I listened to mm-hmm. was like a brand new album because now I could relate to it. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I think like that's the same way with scripture. You know, some things I just won't catch when I'm early on in life. Some things see, like there are some scriptures like I'll be reading now and it took us to go through some things in our marriage to go through some things with our parents. For you to really understand, okay, oh, like that's what that's what was being talked about in right. um, First Corinthians, or you know, that's what was being said. You know, some people don't really catch on to that until they go through things, and yeah. and like I think like the 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 thing that it boils down to is you know you know like that's okay because I think like that's why a lot of people left because they weren't able to adapt to everything just yet. Um, some things they might not catch until like ten years down the line. Right. You know, and that's how it was for myself. And it it wasn't until I got into my 30s where I really started making the connections with who like who God really is to me and, you know, what I'm supposed to be doing as a Christian. Um, so. Well, something you said reminded me of a quote I, I read once. Experience is something that you don't get until right after you needed it. Right. <laughs> yes. I'm like, man. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> if that ain't yep. true right yeah. Chiggy what about you um uh, like what kind of like led to uh, oh led to a season yeah yeah I, mean, I agree with Adam it kind of just naturally evolved um, mm-hmm. slow burn I guess yeah and I mean I, honestly I don't regret it that's just being same, honest same. I yeah. think um I think that I think the thing that makes me sad when people do leave is the association, like people assuming something's wrong. I think that yeah. as humans, we evolve, we change, we need different things, and that's fine. Um, you know, some people leave, go back. Some people leave, find something else. We're all at different places at different times, and we just have to be honest with ourselves and figure out what we need. So, um, but yeah, I just I just think it naturally happened. And um, I mean, I am considering going to another church somewhere else that can meet AJ's needs better, possibly. But even that, like, I think my thing is as long as I have my friends who some go to ICLC, some don't, who are just going to be honest with me about myself and who I know love me genuinely without reservation, without ulterior motives, I know I'm going to be fine. And I think I'm very fortunate because I have family members who I know care about me and who, you know can redirect me to scriptures if I need it and not in a condescending kind of prideful way like you deal with sometimes at church in a church yeah. setting. I do know it's because they generally care about me and love me. They want to see me be my best self um, in whatever avenue, whether it's spiritual or not. Um, so I guess that's my thing. Um, yeah, it just kind of naturally happens, you know? Okay. Um, and I do think it needs to happen because I feel like a lot of... Um, I do feel like sometimes at church, everything's like, oh, you're just insane. You need to get better. No, sometimes you need counseling. Sometimes you need a life coach. Sometimes you Mm -hmm. need intensive therapy Yes. um, to deal with whatever kind of issues, whether it be mental, emotional, physical, whatever issues you have going on so that you can focus on the spiritual. And I think that that is, um, that's also something that I really am grateful that I, you know, kind of left and reevaluated myself and, um, you just, I just needed it. Yeah. I just feel like that's what I needed. So from there, we'll see where I, I go next, but I'm just trying to kind of just pray and focus on myself and figure out what God is leading me and my family to and follow that, whatever that looks like. 
than being open to that. Yeah. Yeah. Amen to all of that. Um, so you mean to tell me y'all didn't leave because y'all just wanted to go sin, right? <laughs> no. Sorry, I'm 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 taking a jab and throwing shade at some things that some people say about people who leave. <laughs> And so, and y'all's lives are obviously are not in shambles. Y'all life didn't fall apart after you left, right? It it, it definitely no, did, it not. Fall apart. It did not. Uh, yeah, sorry, <laughs> I had I had to throw that in there. But that, that's a uh, that's it. Do y'all um do y'all have anything y'all want, y'all would want to say to? And I realize I preface this by saying I realize that I'm going to be talking about a. A large group of people so if this ends up sounding confusing my apologies anything y'all would want to say to either people who have left and they feeling like dang am i alone people who are still there and they trying to leave people who are still there and they deep in the kool-aid <laughs> all of that like any words of advice encouragement anything to anybody out there who might be listening yeah Um, I mean, I, I think, you know, mainly, uh, it's, I think, you know, it's okay to consider, it's okay to consider everyone's opinion, whether yeah. they're a part of the church or not. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, sometimes I think it's good because, you know, it's, it's so easy to, you know, um, exclude what, what, you know, like, as we call it, the world mm-hmm. is saying, um, yeah. because they're not a part of the church, but you know, it, it's okay to, it's okay to, you know, build with people outside of it, you know? Yeah. Um, and you know, and, 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 you know, cause you know, I, I've, I've, you know, I've done, you know, I tell you, you know, a lot of research. Some people, you know, I'm glad that we weren't messed up mentally leaving. Yeah. But some oh, people yeah. who I really are, I yeah. guess. And, and, you know, it's beyond. I can't really understand it, but it, it's not my job to understand why. But just know that, like, you know, some people really left messed up. Yeah. You know? Some people really have been traumatized by this. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and you know, this might come out in their, you know, actions, you know, some people might leave and just go down, you know, go up, off the deep end where they're just trying like, everything that, that, that they weren't doing there or, yeah, you know, some people, it's, it's a lot, you know, um, right. and, you know, I, I, you know, just, you know, pray that everyone doesn't have to get to that point, whether they want to leave or not. But you know, it's okay to examine things. I think like that's right. that's the main thing. Now I agree with that hundred percent. I think at the end of the day, um, I hate saying this, but I think at the end of the day, you have to examine it and then consider where you are with God and what you feel like He wants you to do. Like, yeah, it's really okay to go somewhere else. Like, at the end of the day, no, I, like no one's gonna know. I hate saying this it makes me cringe but it's the truth like <laughs> no one's going to know your heart or your intentions i really yeah you and god have to figure that out and yeah. i think that's the thing even for me now like as i go through life different challenges different struggles and i think that this is kind of a tangent because i'm good for that kind of even with having kids like i feel on a whole different level like right my decisions are not just affecting me but they're affecting my kid my kids you know and yeah i guess my thing is i'm really all about what is healthy for me? What is healthy for him? And then what do I want him to see? What am, how am I living? Am I being, am I really seeking God or am I just checking in? Like our kids see that. They feel that energy when we're just doing things like rope, like a robot. Like what do I want to portray? So for me, um, yeah, I'm just saying, I guess I'm saying all that to say, take time and examine like Adam was saying and figure out where you feel like god's calling you to be and then don't be afraid to make a mistake like Mm -hmm. we're human like even with us going to different churches or figuring things out like we're human god god gets it (laughs) thank goodness god is god and he's (laughs) not the churches that we went to you know he Mm. really he's so much bigger than that and you know i do think that he wants to guide us to him 
wherever church we need to be at. And I think we just need to kind of open ourselves up to that and really petition him to make it clear. Because I know for me, there's sometimes even now I'm like, oh, I'm just trying to figure it out. I don't know. You know, I haven't arrived. Yeah. You don't ever arrive. And I think right. as long as we're humble and we love each other and we're honest with each other, I think we're going to get what we need to get. But I think the main thing is that humility, being honest with yourself and your the people who you're, um, the people you're close to. Um, and then, of course, just trying to lean into God as much as possible. Um, pray, read your Bible, try to figure out yourself, examine, and like Adam was saying, research, study. I think it's, it's just, you'll figure out where you need to go. Just don't get so consumed with what other people may think about your decision if you know in your heart that you did everything you should to get, if you did everything you should to figure out where you feel like you need to be at that time, it's okay. Like, it's okay. It really will be okay. <laughs> It'll yeah, be all right. It's it really will. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Amen to all of that. And Adam, Chiggy, thank y'all so much for, you know, taking time to, to do this. Uh, I know it was a long, long conversation. And I know we we digging up, reopening old wounds and all of that. But <laughs> yes. yeah, I, I appreciate y'all uh, again yeah, taking wow. the time out to do this. And I know Pete, there there's somebody out there, uh, whether they're have already left, still there, gonna leave, still right. there, don't plan to leave. This will, you know, there's somebody out there that needed what what y'all said today. So I, I appreciate that. Of course, um, thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah, no thanks. Problem. Yeah, and, <laughs> and you know, thanks for doing this too, man. Because it, you kind of, you know, I mean, because it's it's not like you know we really talk about stuff in the past that um, that much, but you know, I think you know it's. For someone that's never been a part of ICOC, mm -hmm. you really, it's like, you know, but you don't know. So it's, 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 it it's kind of hard to, had to been there. <laughs> you know, like, hopefully, you know, people hopefully you don't, but you as, had to been there. Right. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, people will, will see it as just a conversation, but it, it really was a, a, a different time. So, and if you weren't there, a lot of the, the feelings that were, you know painting right now yeah. you're not going to really connect with it but i think like this is good being that you know we were a part of it it's good to talk about stuff you know it's definitely good to discuss things like this mm -hmm. um, so yeah yeah I, yep. I do this for you know other people as much as i do it for myself because like mm -hmm. you said i had to realize not eight or nine years went by okay maybe not that many but a, a, many years went by before i had even began to process this i mm -hmm. just left and didn't look back the the mm -hmm. what i had gone through i was just like look i'm ready to just move on from this mm -hmm. so aside from one other person and uh, and then also just venting to naya every now and then when something <laughs> would bring up a memory i just never talked about it and right. then i found a channel um my probably millionth shout out to um helen over at um um over at losing my religion slash icoc shenanigans i found her channel found the xicoc group and i was like i never talked about this wow mm -hmm. like so it wasn't it wasn't traumatizing for me but i was like you know what maybe i do need to get this out yeah and right. i'll just get it out on camera so yeah other people need to get it out can get it out with me Right. right, right, yeah, yeah. Just trying, trying to, trying to do the Lord's work out here, you know. Yeah, I feel you, man. I feel you, man. Cool. All right, but everybody at home, thank y'all for rocking with us for however long this video ends up being. <laughs> um, I know my videos be long, but you know those of y'all who've been, I appreciate y'all. Whether y'all, you know, take it all in at once or y'all. The way I do other people's videos, I, I do it in bikes. You know, I, yeah. I, right. I don't sit there for the whole two hours. Right. <laughs> I, I will I will still digest the two hours. Right. Um. But yeah, thank y'all for watching. Um. Hit that. What 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 do all the YouTube people say? Hit that like button, the subscribe yeah, button, like, the share button, yeah. all that <laughs> all that stuff. And again, yeah. I'm just doing this just to help everybody else. I ain't trying to get. I mean, if I get some money off of this, I ain't gonna argue. But yeah, that's not my goal. <laughs> that's not my goal. Right. I'm just I'm just out here trying to let. Uh, the rest of y'all know y'all ain't alone right, um right. so y'all leave, leave some comments if y'all want to be interviewed i'm super behind on them but let me know if you want to and i'll get to you and that's it y'all have a good night and i will see y'all at the next video all right all right peace brother Bye.